Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the channel. We are back with another Britney Spears documentary video. This one is part five of Free Britney. The series has been good, and we hope that our videos, along with other videos, uh, reaction videos, and people putting this out, put awareness to what's going on to Britney. And and I know it, it has been awareness, but I need I, we need a lot more people because exactly. this is insane. Yeah, this is insane. This is like freedom where it's yeah, it's unjust. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let's get it on. No. Hi there. Um, I cannot disclose who I am. I used to be a paralegal for an attorney that worked um, with Britney's conservatorship. I am no longer with them. And what is happening is disturbing, to say the least. Britney Spears has been admitted to a mental health facility. So Jamie said, either you take this medication or the show's off. When I first heard the Britney Scream voicemail, um, that's when everything clicked for me. Everything that that paralegal said made so much sense. And what we have to do is something, we have to apply public pressure. We need people to talk about this. I think the energy surrounding it is that the world is watching. There's no denying that the moment that they played that voice now. That was the start of the end. Britney Spears' life has never been her own. From a young age, she was thrust into show business to get away from her dysfunctional family. She blew up as a mega pop icon. But her freedom was then at the mercy of the media. And soon after, her father's. Britney has been under a probate conservatorship for over a decade and has very few freedoms. We have detailed every injustice against Britney in the previous four parts of our series. But in part five of Deep Dive Presents Free Britney, we are going to go deeper than we've gone before. By exploring the depths of Britney's very public court battle against her conservatorship. In detail, the viral social media campaign that formed because of it. How do we think Britney's Christmas was? I guess we'll get more into it in this episode. I mean, yeah, we didn't see a ton right. from her, which maybe means it was good. God, we're also like one month out from the new show starting. A couple of months ago, my father was hospitalized and almost died. Britney Spears cancels her Las Vegas residency show due to a family crisis. <laughs> At this point, Jamie's for sure been out of the hospital for like at least a month. He's expected to make a full recovery. I don't buy that her taking care of him is why this residency is ending. Really? Yeah. If Brittany is the caregiver, then she's obviously shouldn't be under a conservator. Yeah, it's extreme to cancel like an entire residency. I would love to know like how much money was sunk into I this mean, already. Millions and millions of dollars. Like there's no question. She makes the announcement on the 4th, on Friday the 4th, that Sunday the 6th in Encino, California, the paparazzi spotted Britney Jean Spears in the driver's seat. I mean, we haven't seen her driving in years. 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 Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. So I think Britney wants to break the rules. We were talking about it and he was like, what do you think's gonna happen? Is she gonna go dark? And I was like, <laughs> we don't know. We don't, we don't <laughs> know. There was one post about the and there's been nothing since. No. Do you think she wrote this? No. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Andrew Wallet, he's the one that was, I think, really into like making money off of her and stuff, and he's the one that petitioned for that big raise. And yeah, I mean, he can't be happy, obviously. I guess if he got his raise, though, he got it. I mean, like we said, the money's going somewhere, and she was about to make a out of it. Mm -hmm. So people were... Do we think Britney had anything to do with that last baby one more time post? No. We just don't know what she's up to right now. Currently, when we're recording this, day 17 of the Britney shutdown. <laughs> I need something. I need I, I need a meme. I need a dance video. Give me a makeup selfie. I think we're on like day 26 of the show. Day and something infinity, like it feels like. Jamie Lynn posted something about the anniversary of her daughter Maddie. Brittany did not like it. Right. That's like, to me, makes me wonder if the phone's been taken from her. 
abandon us everywhere else, but if your niece, yeah, someone took your phone away. Because I've always believed that that's part of what goes on at Operation Control Brittany, is I've always believed that there was some kind of filtration system going on with her internet and her phone and what have you. Okay, so I, I, get, I lost track of what day we're on, but we're pretty much a month out. Oh from my God, it feels like years. <laughs> Brittany has stepped out of public life for a second. Uh, this is pretty extraordinary because, again, she does, she's not promoting anything at the moment. We are 40 days dry. Oh my God. It's getting biblical. So oh 47 days and counting. Are we going to see this before Mardi Gras? Come back to us. We really miss you. A lawyer who is credited with reinventing Britney Spears' career is resigning. Andrew Wallet quits, and he says, quote, substantial detriment, irreparable harm, and immediate danger will result to the conservatee and her estate if the relief requested herein is not granted on an ex parte basis. He's been doing it for over 10 years, like something's going on. And Britney, still nowhere to be seen. And leaving the singer's estate solely in the hands of her dad. <laughs> I don't talk. No. Why don't you talk? Why don't you talk to him? Because I've never had talked to anybody you don't. Love. People are theorizing there's some kind of fight, perhaps, over her social media specifically. Something is going on. Yeah, whether it's an intentional decision by Britney to, to remain dark or something appears to be because we know that it was jointly run by both yes. her and the management team, which is comprised of, as we know, Lou Taylor, Larry Rudolph, and dad. Their dad isn't sick, so why aren't they posting? I think everything's in total chaos right now, more so than I think it's really honestly ever been. There was some article that was like, Britney's doing better than ever. She's doing yes. really great. Source tells us she's in a much, much, much better place than she was 10 years ago. Right now, they are focusing on her dad's health, and there's all this obvious PR shit coming out. To me, that reeks of Lou Taylor and Larry Rudolph, right? Like, someone from that camp. It's becoming such a long time that I think they're feeling the pressure to, like, have to fabricate some kind of a story because she's so invisible right now. It, it, this can only go on for so much longer. It's either going to be that she announces what's going on, and we'll have to just get her fans to rally behind her, or we're gonna find out something not so good. We've been freaking out because she's been gone and we all have the whole community, all of us, where are, where is she? We all need to take time for a little, quote, me time. People are taking it at face value mm -hmm. and just being like, oh my God, Brittany, we missed you. So we're just like all over the internet freaking out. Everyone's like, do we think it's her? We don't think it's her. The facade has been broken. Yeah. We're not be fucking around anymore. We know that something's going on and we know that you're hiding our girl. Half an hour later, TMZ exclusive, Britney Spears checks into mental health facility dot 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 distraught over dad's illness. Our sources say Brittany checked herself into the facility about a week ago where she will live for 30 days. Just proving the point that she did not post this. Yeah, the story contradicts itself on so many levels. I'm wondering if maybe TMZ got tipped off to the fact that she had been checked in somewhere. Then they went to the camp for comment. The camp feeds them their Jamie is sick-ish. They know what's coming out in the next 24 hours. They put together this meme. She did not check herself into a mental institution. We know that under the terms of her conservatorship, she does not choose her own health care. It is legally impossible that she alone chose to check herself into this facility. And she's been so MIA, it's like, did she be like, fuck you guys, I'm out, and tried, and then they got her back? Did she finally wake up and snap after being held in captivity for over a decade? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Britney's Graham. This is a special emergency episode. We are dropping it early. Uh, this is this is a big deal, guys. I hope that wherever you are, you're somewhere that you're able to receive some big information and feel a lot of things and have your mind blown. We got a voicemail from an anonymous source uh, that we have verified worked as a paralegal in an office involved in Britney's conservatorship. Britney's Graham didn't know it yet, but the emergency podcast episode they were about to do would change Britney's life. Hi there. Um, I cannot disclose who I am. I just heard the latest episode. You guys are onto something. Um, I used to be a paralegal for an attorney that worked um, with Britney's preservatorship. I am no longer with them. Um, and what is happening is disturbing to say the least. Britney was in rehearsals for domination. It came to Jamie's attention that Britney was not taking her medication as prescribed. She was missing a lot of doses and full on not taking them. So the doctor said, okay, let's get you on a new one. Well, she refused to take the new one. So Jamie said, either you take this medication or the show's off and I'm pulling my support and you can't do it. Britney did not follow Jamie's instructions. And so he was true to his word. He pulled the show. He verbatim said, blame it on my illness, and that's when we get the early January Instagram. 
fast forward a couple days, Brittany's still not following through with her medication, and she is with Sam driving. It's, it's a big rule that she broke. Brittany has been in the mental facility since mid-January. Of course, the statement yesterday said uh, she entered last week. That is not true. She's been in there since mid-January. She did not want to go. This was not a decision she made at all. There is no end in sight for this day at this mental facility to end. What was exposed in this voicemail was so dark, so disturbing, and what's even scarier is this was only a tiny glimpse as to what was happening behind closed doors. For going on three months now, Brittany was in a mental health facility against her will. She was completely isolated from her children in the outside world, all because she was trying to finally take some control back of her life. This just shows how far the conservatorship is willing to go and how many rights they will violate just to keep Brittany under their thumb. Tess and Barbara would then text with the paralegal, giving us even more insight into the abusive conservatorship. The paralegal said Andrew Wallet, co-conservator of the estate, quit so abruptly in March because he was allegedly scared of getting disbarred and wanted no liability when it came to forcing Brittany into the mental health facility. He exposed that Larry Rudolph very much had a hand in putting Brittany in the facility. Larry allegedly said it at the very least would help with ticket revenue when they re-announced the Vegas residency, yet again showing how the a team of people around Britney only see her as a product they can market and not a human being. We also learned that Britney was going to start the administrative process to end the conservatorship. To stop her from doing so, Jamie threatened her with her children, something he has done since 2008. And when that didn't work, they forced her into the facility. The paralegal even flashed back to 2009, saying Jamie Spears promised Britney if she finished the circus tour, he would end the conservatorship. But when the conservatorship was made permanent and didn't end his promise, he said, it caused Britney to have a major breakdown in 2010. That would explain why in the era after circus, femme fatale, many fans noticed Britney seemed very checked out, like she was just going through the motions and she wasn't quite herself. I first started to notice that something was different with Britney around the time femme fatale came out in that tour. I would read about it a little online. I didn't actually see that tour in person. So I was aware of the rest of the fan base, you know, questioning things. I was kind of in denial though. Immediately, I think when it was like the real wake up call for me as a fan was during the Femme Fatale era. Just kind of like her presence wasn't there in interviews. For the record, like the spark was still there and you felt bad for her. Then like in the following documentary, I am the Femme Fatale, it just seemed very off. He also said that Lou Taylor, Larry Rudolph and Adam Lieber, Britney's managers, were the ringleaders. They had all been around since the conservatorship was put into place and all had financially benefited from Britney's estate. Shortly after the podcast went live, Adam Lieber quickly denied involvement in regards to what was currently going on with Britney, as he hadn't worked with her since the Peace of Me residency. However, this doesn't discount the fact that he had been around all the other years and was business partners with Larry Rudolph. The podcast had already made its way to the trusted conservatorship team, and they were feeling the pressure. This podcast would help kickstart a movement as Good. Britney's injustices were being blasted across every major media platform. Some breaking news as TMZ is now reporting Britney Spears has been admitted to a mental health facility. Britney Spears has been admitted to a mental health facility. Celebrity website TMZ is reporting that Spears voluntarily checked herself into a residential mental health facility about a week ago. My jaw was on the floor, my heart was pounding. Everything that that paralegal said made so much sense, and things that I hoped weren't true, I believed instantly. When I first heard the Britney Scram voicemail, um, that's when everything clicked for me. That episode really did change a lot of fans' opinions from, oh, maybe Britney's okay, maybe she needs it, we should give her privacy, to actually maybe those hashtag free Britney people aren't as crazy as we've been thinking. I was, I was sad and I was frustrated, but I also was excited that now this was going to be out there. You know, I thought, okay, well, there's no denying it. Listen to the voicemail. You know, once the judge hears this, the conservatorship's over. And 
you know, unfortunately that wasn't the case. I really was at such a loss for words. It was something that connected a lot of dots to so many lingering questions. Not only was the Pandora's box, it also was a rabbit hole because it provided so much context that you then had to unpack starting from 12 years prior to that voicemail being left. They started looking into the original conservatorship documents that underlie Britney's conservatorship, and those would have been filed in February 2008 while Brittany was in the psychiatric unit on a 5150 hold. And in my opinion, Brittany Spears's constitutional rights are violated every day that she's in this conservatorship. I absolutely think Brittany's conservatorship should be entirely removed. The woman was going through a lot. Could we give her some credit? She had two kids within one year. I am a mom to one two and a half year old. I cannot imagine having two babies in the house. She was going through a divorce she was going through a custody battle. Her aunt, who was like a second mother to her, had just passed away. She was also dealing with this mega level of fame that you and I will never understand. There is no reason for her to be in a conservatorship, and there absolutely never has been. This is all about the money and control, and it has nothing to do with Britney as a human being. And that's why I'm so passionate about advocating, because we have lost Britney the human being. No one is considering Britney the human being, aside from the Free Britney movement. You know, that's when a lot of fans realized that we had been contributing to this problem by paying into the brand. I was sad that we didn't realize it sooner, but it also energized us to band together and use our voices to affect change. When Britney's Graham released the emergency episode, me and a few other fans in a group chat were like, you know what, we have to do something. We have to apply public pressure. We need people to talk about this. So we planned the rally. It was so last minute. We just picked a spot, which turned out to be City Hall in West Hollywood. We took our posters and we contacted media outlets hoping they would come and cover us. And a lot of them did. And that's really how we got the ball rolling. That the toxic singer is being held against her will in the health facility. And thus, the Free Britney hashtag was born. Fans who believe the podcast claims protested in front of West Hollywood City Hall on Monday night to support Britney. I think the Free Britney rally has instilled a lot of hope and I think the energy surrounding it is really one that the world is watching. Any individual who feels that Britney Spears does not have the wherewithal to do things like use a phone without permission or drive a car without permission, I would really wonder why they feel it's appropriate for her to be touring the world for the last three years and to have put out three huge albums and to have had a very successful Vegas residency. If I wasn't under the restraints that I'm under right now, I'd feel so liberated and feel like myself. I think that what Babs and Tess did was really brave uh, to be so forthcoming with that information that was shared with them. That's something where you cross that line and there's a shift, you know? You put that out there and you're the ones who have that information. So like, there's going to be a shift in your lives when you have something put out like that. And they took that step and I think if it weren't for them, there wouldn't be the global movement that we're experiencing right now. Following that, when the first court date post voicemail leak had happened, that's where I started to really kind of get to know everybody who was going to remain established and consistent within the movement. This has changed my life incredibly. Instead of all of these years of me getting questioned about my love for Britney, why Britney, this and that, all of those people understood 100%. I mean, there was no explanation necessary. It was just like, we were all there, we all cared. There's so many people involved who have been so committed to the movement and just spreading the word in our own individual corners of where, where we live and where we come from. It really is a diverse group of people, but we all had this common bond and that was our love for Britney. It was a magical experience. I really feel like I found a community of people that I belong to. To those who ask why I care about Britney and her conservatorship, I feel like I have a lot in common with Britney Spears on a superficial level, right? Just like on our let's compare our lives level. We're both from small town, South Louisiana. We both were brought up in oppressive environments. We both had fathers who struggle with addiction. My first full name is actually also Brittany. When I look at Brittany, I almost become aware that it could be me. Um, it could be me in that situation. I'm multiply disabled. I have neurological conditions that frankly could be used against me to put me in a conservatorship. And while it is highly unlikely, if that ever happened to me, I would really hope 
that people would be fighting and advocating for me on my behalf and, and trying to get me out of that. I would hope that people would care enough to at least make some noise about it. And for that reason, I feel like I should do the same for Brittany. Britney's Instagram was being used as a weapon against the Free Britney movement. As after Britney's gram released this voicemail, more and more clues were being brought up from Britney's past. One of the major ones being the alleged email Britney sent to her lawyer that we explored in part three of this series. Britney's team needed a scapegoat from all of this. So by default, they chose none other than her past manager and friend, Sam Lutfi. During 2007, Sam Lutfi was a big figure in Britney's life. And in various court documents, he stated that he helped facilitate the greatest pop album of all time. He had already been involved with defamation lawsuits between Britney's conservatorship and her mother, but this time the conservatorship would go all the way back to 2007 to try and pin these emails all on him. In the caption of the Instagram post on Britney's official account, it accused Sam Lutfi of writing the emails that were from Britney addressed to her lawyer. The same emails that were claiming Lou Taylor was a stalker and trying to cleanse Britney of spirits. The Post also attempted to diminish the movement and put everyone at ease, but it did anything but. Britney's supporters began speculating that she was still in the mental facility when this video was released. The video is very short and generic, but the message underneath was multiple paragraphs, clearing her business manager, Lou Taylor, of any wrongdoing. This was especially odd as Britney had previously expressed disdain for Lou Taylor and had left several clues. The control of Britney and her image were becoming more and more evident in the public was finally catching on. Her team tried to combat this further by letting her out of the mental facility a few times. However, each of these instances was highly publicized. For instance, she was let out for Easter and the photos released were blasted by every publication. Or the photos released of her getting frozen yogurt within the same two-day time period that the Instagram post was made. It all seemed very calculated and inauthentic. And this caused Britney's supporters to question everything. And rightfully so, Britney's team had decided Received her supporters for years and created a false narrative that Britney was quote crazy and needed help from her father. However, as we've detailed in the past four parts of the series, this couldn't be further from the truth. Britney is extremely articulate in interviews. She has an artistic vision for each of her projects and knows what she wants. All of these small clues were catching the public's attention as well. For the first time in Britney's career, the general public's eyes weren't on Britney. They were on her conservatorship. She has kept her entire manager's father. I mean, ex. nobody ex. Mm. You know, she keeps everybody. Nobody works for her for free. They work because they get a percentage of what she earns. So when there's a lot of money involved, mm -hmm. nothing would surprise me. The Free Britney movement was growing so quickly that it inspired people who worked with Britney in the past to come forward publicly with their stories, giving the Free Britney movement even more confirmation on how controlling things were behind the scenes. Carlos DeSantis, a content producer, tweeted out that Britney's dad, Jamie, had him banned from ever working with her again because he didn't ask Jamie for permission to take a photo that Britney herself consented to taking. Mario Lopez, who has done many interviews with Britney, confirmed it by saying he remembered that happening. This story just goes to show how controlling Jamie is and how he still treats Britney like a child. David LaChapelle spoke out when footage from the Make Me video he directed was leaked. David found it very suspect that the video which was scrapped in 2016 was leaked three years later while Britney was away in the mental health facility. In the previous part of this series, we went into detail of the scrapped footage and how Britney wanted to be filmed in a cage. However, David also said when he photographed Britney back when she was 17 for Rolling Stones, he could tell that even back then, something wasn't right. When fans thanked David for coming forward, he said he doesn't want to create more stress for Britney, but it seemed really odd obvious that Britney's team was leaking footage while she was away. Also saying Britney didn't like the original video because it was too sketch, but that was the direction he was given by management. Management wanted the video to be controversial. French director Lafay, who worked with Britney in 2013, talked about how he wished he could extract Britney from her handlers. He said Britney's team analyzed their every move, and when she tried to whisper something to him, Britney's bodyguard appeared, asking if there was a problem. He said he can't stop thinking that she wanted to tell him something. The movement was gaining so much traction that Miley Cyrus showed support at her concert in Memphis. 
At the Memphis concert, Alex a fan met Miley backstage, where they briefly spoke about Miley defending Britney. Per Alex, Miley said, Of course, dude, it's sad to see what they are doing to her. Miley supporting the movement was huge, considering Miley and Britney had done a song together and even shared managers. And this was just the beginning. Over the next year and a half, many more celebrities and people close with Britney would come out in support of the Free Britney movement. In breaking news, Britney Spears has checked out of the mental health facility and is heading home. Brit was spotted leaving the facility today after being picked up by her boyfriend, Sam Asagari, followed by another vehicle carrying her luggage as she made her way home to Thousand Oaks. According to TMZ, Spears checked herself out of the rehab center, but she's still dealing with a big unresolved issue with her meds. Doctors are still apparently working on the right formula for her, but call it a work in progress. The media was quick to report on her release, saying Britney addressed the theories that she was held against her will in a facility as just out of control rumors. The narrative in the media was switching back in favor of Jamie and his team as the public started to believe the posts made days prior on Britney's Instagram account, but that would soon change. Lynn Spears, Britney's mom, was on her way to California to help her daughter. According to Radar, Britney actually wanted to do a tell-all interview as she knew her fans were really worried for her, but allegedly her mom shut her down. Britney recently spent three weeks in a mental health facility, leading to the Free Britney movement and concern among her fans that she was being held against her will. Her father, Jamie Spears, appeared in court today, and at the same time, her mom, Lynn Spears, took legal steps demanding a bigger role in their troubled daughter's life. At the moment, Jamie is currently in charge of all of Britney's legal affairs. But Britney's mom, who is divorced from Jamie, said in court documents filed today that it is in her daughter's best interest that she have a say as well. Was Britney held against her will, Lynn? How's she getting on now? Wonderful. That was Lynn getting into Britney's Mercedes, assuring the photog her daughter is fine. And Lynn wants access to her medical records. Our source says, quote, her mom has tried at different points over the years to have some sort of say. Lynn had not been involved in the conservatorship since 2008, when she was pushed out from having access to Britney's medical information, something we learned previously in an alleged leaked email between Lynn Spears and Jamie Spears. Lynn was done being left in the dark when it came to major medical decisions involving Britney. She hired an attorney and filed an ex parte application with the Los Angeles Superior Court to allow her attorney to represent her at the upcoming May 10th hearing. Also, on May 6th, Lynn requested special notice to be notified on all matters pertaining to Britney. I'm outside of an LA courthouse where Britney Spears and her mother Lynn are attending a hearing about her conservatorship. Brittany and her mom would walk hand in hand into the Los Angeles Superior Court. Pink signs and Britney Spears photos outside the courthouse. Fans came to send the star and the judge a message. The free Britney movement could not be stopped. Fans were right outside the courthouse protesting for her freedom. This court hearing was major. Very rarely did Britney attend her own hearings. In fact, Sam Ingham, her court-appointed attorney, said Britney was the one who wanted this hearing to address the court about her medical care. She was ready to face her father in front of the judge. Britney told Judge Brenda Penny that her father committed her into the mental health facility against her will and had her to take medications. Lynn Spears' attorney would echo these claims against Jamie Spears. Judge Brenda Penny ordered that Britney undergo a 7.30 independent expert evaluation. In this evaluation, Britney will be assessed and a comprehensive report will be provided to the courts. A source told US Magazine that Britney is exploring petitioning the court to end the conservatorship and the 7.30 evaluation is the first step in the process. Although no changes were made to the conservatorship, up to this point, this was the biggest step towards freedom Britney had ever been able to make. Britney herself was standing up to her father, and with a new judge on the case, it seemed like she could finally tell her truth on how Jamie Spears was abusing the conservatorship. And it looked like Judge Brenda Penny wanted to investigate further, so she set a new status hearing for September of 2019. Just as the fight against Britney's father was beginning, Larry Rudolph turned to TMZ as well to seemingly threaten Britney and her fans. New developments in Britney Spears' health battle. Her longtime manager now questioning whether the superstar will ever perform again after she canceled her Las Vegas residency and then checked into a wellness facility. Larry Rudolph speaking out just days after legal moves surrounding the conservatorship. Rudolph telling TMZ, as the person who guides her career, Based on the information I and all of the professionals who work with her are being told, 
It's clear to me she should not be going back to do this Vegas residency, not in the near future and possibly never again. He also detailed how she hadn't called him in months and that her medication stopped working. She's not calling you back for a reason and you need to move on and accept that you're no longer managing her or working with her. I think when she's got mental health issues and she's made it very clear that she doesn't want to work. It was under the enforcement of her father that she was encouraged to keep going and keep going. I think, you know what, leave her alone. She doesn't want to do it anymore. However, he backtracked the statement very quickly, saying that he just meant the Vegas residency is off. But he also took this time to remove himself from the conservatorship narrative, saying he had nothing to do with it. He knew the Free Britney movement was gaining more and more traction and wanted to distance himself as far away from Lou and Jamie as he could. However, no matter what Larry said, Britney set the record straight by telling paparazzi how she really felt just days later. Britney kept things upbeat during a weekend of outlet store shopping with her boyfriend of two years, Sam Asghari. <laughs> It was kind of a silent statement to the world that she's doing okay. Just listen to her reaction to this paparazzo's question. Any message for fans? I love you guys. Gonna continue to perform, Brittany? Perform again. This is the car. Sorry. Brittany, are we gonna see you perform again? Are we gonna see you perform again, Brittany? Great. You're gonna be back. You know that. Meanwhile, while the media storm was finally raining down on every member of Britney's team, they were still attempting to push blame on Sam Lutfi. Every time a human right had been stripped away from Britney in the past decade, it was always cited that it's done to protect Britney from the bad influence of Sam Lutfi. And this time would be no different. However, Sam fired back as he usually does, saying the Instagram post blaming him for the Lou Taylor emails was a desperate attempt to deflect negative attention onto him, and is a rather ineffective way to overshadow the free Britney movement. The emails in question show a woman capable of running her own life, a narrative they apparently want to hide. Sam had even legally warned Lou Taylor of using this narrative, as when she deflected onto him on her personal account, he threatens legal action, and she immediately deleted her comments. But this restraining order against Sam Lutfi was the only resort left for the conservatorship to blame someone else for the emails coming forward. But when we dive deeper into this restraining order, we see a transcript of a conversation between Sam Lutfi and Lynn Spears. Sam was encouraging Lynn to stand up to Lou Taylor and the conservatorship and become conservator over Britney. He stated that the conservatorship costs Britney over $5 million in legal fees a year and that Lynn Spears shouldn't have to be part of an MLM as Lynn had began selling road and field. He explained how great of a caretaker Lynn is and that she should be the one taking care of Britney. He conveyed the message that the Britney's Graham girls wanted to speak to her if she's open to it and ended the call by saying if May 10th rolls around they may try to take over. Big Jamie's position and end up successful. And then God knows what the they may put you through. This is your chance. We have hundreds of people, doctors, lawyers, journalists, celebrities, all working together to make this transition and leave it all in your hands from now on. He even offered to give Lynn every penny of her settlement with him back, but Lynn didn't appear to take his offer. As during the hearing for the restraining order, Jamie Spears admitted that his relationship with his daughter had always been strained. However, he also shifted the blame towards Sam Lutfi yet again, saying Sam was inciting fans who used the hashtag Free Britney to criticize his control of Britney during examination. And just like clockwork, the restraining order against Sam Lutfi was granted for five years. This was a big deal, as this would stop Sam from being able to be a part of the Free Britney movement directly. However, he would still make his presence known on social media. This, unfortunately, wouldn't be the last individual the conservatorship would try to silence, as Britney Spears advocate Brian Kutcher would catch a lawsuit as well, this time from Lou Taylor. He was being sued for registering two domains under the names loumtaylor.com and .net, even though he said he didn't have anything to do with the second domain. When you went to these websites, what you saw was pretty surprising to say the least. And even though the first site was taken down, the second site didn't seem to be going away. And it was detailing the demise of the first site, and even more allegations about Lou Taylor, including a post alleging that Lou Taylor hired a private investigator, and someone even allegedly pretended to be Sam Lutfi to get info out of Brian. Brian thought Lou took it too far, saying, For the record, I have never spoken to that man. Lou's complete disregard for professionalism is embarrassing, coming from someone as prominent as she holds herself out to be. This lawsuit is 
is more than just another defamation lawsuit. If Lou pursued this, she would need to prove that what Brian was posting was false and would have to give her statements in the court of law. The Blast even reported that Lou was scheduled to be grilled under oath in a deposition. This would cause Lou to answer a lot of questions she hadn't answered for over a decade. Brian realized this and he didn't want to back down, telling Daily Mail backing down and failing to fight back would have set a dangerous precedent for Lou to continue to intimidate Britney fans with ridiculous lawsuits anytime her feelings get hurt by satirical posts due to her apparent insecurities. After an entire year, Lou's counsel informed the court that they had reached a settlement behind closed doors, further showing it was simply an intimidation tactic. But as soon as Lou needed to provide proof under oath, she slithered away, as this would have been the conservatorship's worst nightmare. So the case may have settled, but the movement did not. The public knew the truth, and the fight would continue to rage on. During this moment in time in which everything was being brought to light, Jamie Spears' approach was very hands-on as well. Much like Lou Taylor, Jamie unfortunately took the litigious route and filed a lawsuit against the owner of the fan site Absolute Britney, Anthony, who he claimed is one of the loudest voices in the crowd. Anthony published a post on Instagram calling out Britney's team for allegedly deleting positive comments on her Instagram post and leaving negative ones up to further their narrative. Like many other Free Britney supporters, Anthony cared about Britney and wanted to get the word out. But what made Anthony's post different was that Britney's mother, Lynn, commented on their post confirming what they had alleged and thanking Anthony for calling this out. Representatives for Britney denied these allegations. However, Jamie Spears went rogue and filed a lawsuit against Anthony. He opened up the lawsuit by calling the Free Britney movement a conspiracy and saying the mob needed to stop. But to prove defamation, Jamie would need to prove that Anthony was acting maliciously by posting his concern for Britney. And this only brought more attention to the movement, and Britney's fans would not be silenced. More and more people would come forward, including the celebrity restaurateur who worked with Britney in the early 2000s, Bobby Oakes, who would go on to describe Jamie as unhinged, telling Page Six that Britney's father, who had no part of the restaurant they were opening, came storming in either hungover or high and demanded an entirely new menu and new employees just days before the restaurant was set to open. And more celebrities and people who had worked with with Britney's team would come forward within the next year, as it appeared Bobby Oaks was right. Jamie would soon show the world just how unhinged he truly was. He went on Instagram Live last night and talked about his grandfather called the D word ending with a K. That's a man's quarrel. Is your grandpa a jerk? Yeah, he's pretty big. The kid locked himself in a room. They argued right. Jamie came and busted down the door. He can go die. I like this. This is actually getting a lot better. It is. Not, not that the other ones weren't good. They were really good. What I mean is, for Britney, things are getting... Yeah, it's for it's her benefit. To, it's definitely picking yeah, up. It, I, I like this. I like this. All right. Okay. I'm so excited, you Crazy guys. Person. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Good thing things are are are, are coming her way. Coming her way. It, good things. Good things. We are happy. We are happy. Very. Please include um, other reactions to other videos because I kind of lost the list. And yeah. But you guys, comment down below. What are what are some other things you want us to react to? See, uh, maybe trailers, anything like that. Comment it down below. Don't forget to include the link, please and thank you. Yeah, because there's a lot of of the same it's video a lot of with the same title, and sometimes we will accidentally do the wrong video. Right. We don't so want that. link, please. please. It would help please. so much. Thank please, you. Please, please, please. And then also, uh, 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 we are at six hundred six six hundred subscribers. Almost six at seven. 80 subscribers. 680? Are we at 680? I didn't even check. Yes. So, yeah. Like, comment, share, and okay. subscribe. Yes. Be nice to others. Please. Stay awesome. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah, to